Hello, America. Welcome to your Leo Nation, where you know that we believe in and support the rule of law. I am the chief. Mark Garrett joining us once again today is Mr. Anthony Jackson. No, that's not Bud Bundy. I used that joke, I think, a show or two ago, but I'm the king of retread. You know, when it's true, it's true. Anthony, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be on Dwayne The Rock Johnson's podcast today. I mean, oh, sorry. I get confused. I'm doing great, though, Mark. Touche. Touche. You know what? I have it coming. I like a good joke. He wants about me. That's all good. Well, Anthony, we have, as usual, we have a lot going on. There's so much to talk about, and this subject is never ending. Matter of fact, my text is, hey, can we back up the recording here a little bit in a start time? Because I just keep digging into more and more and more and more stuff. And that subject today is, pardon me, the border, the Southern United States border. I know a lot has been talked about in regard to the border. It should be. And today will not be the last time that we talk about it. And it won't be the last time you hear about it. But we wanted to dig into some specific areas and we wanted to give a little historical uh, point of view on it and talk about some, some tangible examples of the consequences of how a particular administration versus another manages the border. And before we get into the nuts and bolts of that, I just want to go back just real quick, a show we recently did about homelessness in California. And man, I tell you, and how it relates to this, we have gotten a lot of comments, a lot of comments about that show, which is great. We love it. And a number of detractors about what we were talking about in that show. And of course I respond, I can't respond to all of them. There's so many come in, but I, I responded to, I responded to a handful of comments and one of my comments, I should have pulled it up here. I'm going to paraphrase myself. I was just talking about how the out of control homeless explosion in California is really an assault on the rule of law. And I got a response back, what do you mean really have something to do with rule of law and things like this? And I said, well, yeah, it actually does. And one of the reasons it relates to the border is, is because the, the foundational rule of law when it comes to our country is protecting its citizens, protecting its citizens. And once you don't do that, once you open the borders up to anybody and everybody who wants to walk across, then it affects the law-abiding citizens in this country. And of course, California being a sanctuary state, do you think that the increase in the volume of the, the homeless population in California has nothing to do with the, the massive increase in border crossings? Really? Do you think all these people are coming across the southern border and going right to work? anywhere, McDonald's or IBM or whatever it is. No, many of them, a, a large number, I would guess, are ending up on the street. So the rule of law, the rule of law specifically, I release the border, it affects everybody, every single person in this country. And uh, as long as states like California continue to say, oh, we're open, we are a sanctuary state, we have all these sanctuary cities, you're going to get more of this. You're going to get more and more and more, and you're going to increase the draw across the border, not just from other states or wherever it may be, but you're part of the problem as usual, California, and not just California, but yep, I'm harping on you. So with that said, I want to dive into this. And, and Anthony, before I take up all the oxygen in the room, I didn't know if you wanted to have a couple of opening words there for me and or for yourself. So no, I, I think this is a great topic, and, and I agree. Every time we look into it, there's like another layer that we're peeling back. It's like an onion of, of certain problems that happen. And I think now with how you look at the whole timeline of the whole thing, you can tell that this is a deliberate thing that they're doing. The, this administration is is allowing to happen. And... You could see it through, you know, Chuck Schumer just came out saying we need to grant amnesty to all all the uh, immigrants that came in. There's there's a evil underlying motive underneath this whole thing that's going on, because, I mean, look, we have. 
we have the technology to track everybody. We've had it. Um, there's so many migrants now that are coming across the border, kids being smuggled, and we don't we don't even know where they're going. They're not being tracked, but we did before. So what? I mean, that's kind of my opening statement. Is just that this is this is all by design, and we need to, you know, really come together and figure out what's going on and by just looking at exactly what's going on and not listening to what they're telling us i mean you can look at kjp uh, every day just do, lie do to i us. have to really <laughs> yeah right it's it's something that we have to look at and listen to and we're just being gaslighted every day but please go into the the timeline that you're talking about and we can kind of break down these things and i have a few ideas too of of or at least concerns about the you know the mass migration that's been happening and of of course everybody's talking about it but there's a few important points that i think that we're going to be talking about and that people are going to find concerning and interesting anthony your point about this is not by accident that there is a reason this is happening there's a reason the policies changed literally overnight three and a half years ago it's a very very interesting assertion on your part for people to consider. Now, of course, we've heard the humanitarian explanation. You know, we're going to be a kinder, gentler federal government with our, our neighbors to the South and people who are poverty stricken and that they are being persecuted and so forth. So, yeah, we, we've heard that line, but we know that that is BS. We know that there is a political, there is an electoral motive behind this about stuffing the population, so to speak, in certain cities and certain states in order to increase representation by a certain party in Washington, D.C. We know there are motives by this. There's a motive there to create an underclass, a dependent class upon the federal government with the hope of incubating and developing new, new voters and generations of voters. We all know what's going on here. Uh, no matter what the, this administration tells us, they are not interested in the rule of law. They are interested in the rule of themselves, by themselves, the power. That's what they're, in, that's what they're interested in. So with that, like you said, I, I, I want to give a little bit of historical perspective here. And in, in other words, how do we get to where we are with and the numbers are all over the place. Some say 9 million, some say 12 million, some say more than 12 million have come across the border in the last three and a half years. That's a problem in and of itself that nobody really knows for sure how many people have come across the border. And like you said, Anthony, we know that the federal government has the ability to track, to track these people and their own administration says, well, we're not really sure because you look at their own administration, various statements from very official, various officials, and even those officials differ, not intentionally, but this statement says this, that statement says this, that person says this, no one really knows. That should be frightening all by itself, all by itself. So let me jump back here. This is three and a half years, almost three and a half years, just over three years ago, to be exact. This is April of 2021. Now, you know, I see it all the time. I do it all the time. I try to go to sources um, that may not share the same philosophy as I do. I'm trying to be as on the up and up and uh, professional about this as possible. So let's just say it, left weaning, left leaning, left weaning, but left leaning publications, news sources, pundits, I try to quote them or read them as much as possible. So you know that I'm not just cherry picking from a particular site or a particular news organization. I'm trying to get as much information for you. So I look at these crazy uh, publications so you don't have to. And for those of you who disagree with me, if you haven't read it, I'm going to read it to you for the first time. So this is for the Migration Policy Institute, April 26, 2021. And geez, Mark, how do you know that it, 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 it may not be a conservative publication? Well, let's just read the headline, okay, from this uh, Migration Policy Institute. Border challenges dominate, but Biden's first 100 days marked notable under the radar immigration accomplishment. Now, does this sound like a publication that hates the Biden administration or maybe open border policies? I think not. 
So like this, by the way, it's a very, very long article and I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. It's very short what I actually pulled out here. But so let me start. President Joe Biden entered office with an ambitious immigration agenda, yet has seen some of his administration's early actions overshadowed and tempered even amid significant public attention over the high numbers of asylum seekers and other migrants arriving at the U.S. southern border. More migrants were encountered at the border in March. Now, again, this is two months after he was inaugurated, 2021, in March, than any month since 2001. And the government has been slow to uh, scale up its capacity to address the increasing numbers, while also giving mixed messages about who will be allowed in the country. I want to stop right there. This is two months that it went from the previous administration's policies to more coming across in March than in the previous 20 years. How does that happen? In other words, even if the administration was planning for this, in other words, in 60 days, how do you up it this quick? Well, I'll tell you why. Because if you remember, and you can go back and watch the videos, you can listen to the audio, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, other officials in the Democrat Party were literally saying, come, come, when we take power, come to the United States, come to our southern border. We're going to welcome you. They were advertising open border policies before they took office, and we saw it building up during the Trump administration. These people were literally caravanning for months before Joe Biden was inaugurated, coming up. So they're wondering, gee, how did this happen? Well, it's because you asked for it. Yet as Biden nears 100 days in office on April 30th, he asked with little fanfare not just accomplishments in other areas of immigration policy that rival and in some cases surpass what his predecessors did in the same amount of time. Well, no kidding. No kidding, because his predecessors, even his previous boss, Barack Obama, didn't engage in this kind of behavior. Not even close. Matter of fact, Barack Obama deported a significant number of, of people from the United States, illegal aliens. So, yes, it's very easy to surpass your predecessors when they didn't engage in this type of behavior. As of this writing, the Biden administration had taken 94 executive actions on immigration, according to a Migration Policy Institute count. This compares with the fewer than 30 taken during the first days, 100 days of Donald Trump's presidency, which was arguably more active on immigration than any prior U.S. administration. Why was Trump's more active than any prior administration to that point? is because he was reversing policies that Democrats and yes, Republicans had engaged in that it cost an open border or at least somewhat of a civ border that wasn't doing the job. So Trump was correcting policies from Republican and Democrat administrations. But he guess what? He did it with less than 30 executive orders. And one of those, of course, was building the wall. There were a number of, of other ones there. So this is really important. There's, there's one piece here left I'm going to read to you, and then we're done with this article. It's very important to lay the foundation for the rest of the, the conversation today. One of the aspects of the Biden administration's executive orders was their interior enforcement. I'm taking that right from the, uh, this article. Arguably, the administration's quickest and most dramatic accomplishment was changing immigration enforcement in the U.S. interior, narrowing enforcement much faster then Trump broadened it upon taking office in 2017. Did you hear that? The Biden administration restricted enforcement uh, internally by ICE, where Donald Trump had broadened enforcement, gave ICE more authority to round up people who were here illegally, and those people especially that were here that were uh, a danger to uh, U.S. citizen safety and sovereignty of our country. On Inauguration Day, the Department of Homeland Security issued new temporary enforcement priorities, which were further fine-tuned and operationalized on February 18th. These priorities limited U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE officers, 
scroll down here, pardon me, to targeting removable non-citizens who are national security risks. Now, this is part of this complicated, long uh, sentence, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to read the beginning of it again so you can appreciate how insane and how divisive, quite frankly, when it comes to the rule of law, this sentence is. These priorities limited U.S. immigration. This is the Biden administration's uh, policies. These priorities limited U.S. immigration and custom enforcement officers to targeting, I'm putting this quote, unquote, removable non-citizens who are national security risks, semicolon, who entered the United States on or after November 1st, 2020. Now there's more, but let's just stop. The policies that the Biden administration implemented directing ICE who, to, who they could actually arrest and remove was narrow enough, and it gets more narrow, but it only applies to those people who arrived in this country on or after November 1st of 2020. So if you are a multiple convicted felon and you got here in November, I'm sorry, October 31st of 2020, even these restrictive policies don't apply to you. This is insane. I continue, comma, either illegally or legally and have since fallen into unlawful status. Can you believe the, 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 the word salad that they use here have fall into, into unlawful status. If they came here illegally, of course, they're already in unlawful status, to use their terms, and fallen into unlawful status means they committed a crime subsequent to getting here. How about just saying you're an illegal immigrant or you've come here and since become a criminal, but they won't use those types of words because they make too much sense and they specify behavior. That's what the Biden administration and left does not like and who are public safety threats with certain criminal convictions or gang involvement, removable non-citizens falling outside these priorities can be arrested, detained, or removed only with an ICE supervisor's approval. If you're here illegally and you want to have all these other 46 you know, elements applying to you, you can only be removed from the country with an ICE agent supervisory approval. These change prosecutorial discretion guidelines uh, were the inverse of DHS changes enacted by the Trump administration in February of 17 and so forth and so on. Um, so that's the foundation. This is three and a half years ago. This is the philosophy. This is the, the, the underlying system that we're working on now. All come... We're opening the border, and if you are lucky enough to get across the border, we're going to make it so difficult for ICE to remove you, so difficult for ICE to remove you if they find you, if they find you, that chances are you'll be here forever. So that was three paragraphs in a very, very long article, but I wanted to read that to you. And Anthony, I wanted to give you a chance to respond to that or, you know, or take it from there, so to speak. Well... I'm glad that they they wrote it that way, and I've seen a similar article. We kind of went over it on a previous podcast, but I'm glad they're catching the the real criminals. That guy that was smuggling Freon over, damn that guy! Right? You, <laughs> you think there's some people who may not have heard that, or may, maybe they, they think you're making that up. You want to expand a little bit on that, or I can. Um, way, but go ahead. You please. You can you can explain it better. I mean, God forbid somebody does that, right? It's, I mean, you look at, let me, let me get to this. You see these criminals coming over, right? You can ask any politician that is for the, the whole asylum spiel, right? You ask them, how do we verify these people that are coming over if they're asylum seekers or they're coming from a Venezuelan prison, mm -hmm. you know, if they're part of a, MS-13 or certain gangs, right? They'll call you racist. Of course. Yeah, of there's course. no system tracking anything, right? And you can smuggle people over the border. You can you can cross the border, even if you're a previous felon. 
you can't be detained. You can't be sent back. But God forbid you smuggle a Toyota Hilux truck from Mexico over or Freon. You or know, Freon. That's a real story, ladies and gentlemen. I forget which yeah, podcast please, it was. Please, please, please. Uh, well, it's a real story that this, that this it's it's a U.S. citizen, and and of course, you know, this administration and and other local, you know, state administrations have made it almost impossible, so expensive to use Freon, buy Freon, whatever it is. Basically, it's a, it's a greenhouse gas, and we're all going to catch on fire next week because someone's keeping the refrigerator cool or your car cool with Freon. And so some guys it's causing the, the Boeing, the Boeing uh, issues now. See, this is it's causing extra point. turbulence. Yeah, it's, it's not the maintenance. Could you see? <laughs> well, apparently, according, uh, according, he, according to our Buttigieg. glorious transportation secretary. Yeah, or, or how uh, is, Joe, yeah, Joe Biden is turbulence. Pete, Pete booty juice. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I think that's his name. But I mean, I know we digress, but it's... It, it's it's it, you know if it weren't so frightening it would, we we could laugh about it the entire time but now climate change is is increased turbulence by fifteen percent of course climate change is climate racism you know that's all documented for these people who believe this crap but it just shows the complete lack of seriousness and 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 by, and by the way focus on what should be priorities when it comes to governance governance what government should be doing for it's respective citizens, not just the United States, but wherever you live, your government should be having the first priority of, of, of ensuring the welfare, or the safety of the citizens. But the Freon was, yeah, an American citizen went south, he, he, he crossed the border, he got some free, Freon, he smuggled it in. And I can't remember what the penalty is, but he's looking up to like, I, was it 12 years or something like that? Something extraordinary. Yeah, something, yeah, yeah extraordinary. For smuggling in Freon. Meanwhile, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about the drugs coming in and all the other crimes are happening and people are, are literally literally just being released from per- prison or released from jail pending trial, so to speak. So let me move forward. And again, just so everybody knows, here are my notes. No- nothing to hide here. We can see that it says NBC News. NBC. There's probably a really good joke I could come up with NBC, but I won't use it right now in the year. But the title is, and by the way, now this is from September of 2023 and listen i am obviously not afraid to just go off on you know on my my uh my pulpit here my bandstand and just go ahead and talk off the cuff i can do it all day long on this stuff the reason i read a number of publications or news sources things like this is to let you know this is just not mark's opinion this is just not me yelling at the other side I tried to bring you stuff in black and white. I tried to bring, as they say, I tried to bring the receipts. Okay. I have my opinion. I try to bring the receipts. Here's where I'm getting this stuff from. So again, I'm using NBC. It's, I know NBC stands for never been conservative. Okay. Is that fair enough? Is that fair enough? Ladies and gentlemen, I just came up with that one. It's just, it's all too easy. It's all too easy. But the headline reads number of people on terrorist watch list. Stopped at southern U.S. border has what? Anthony, here it is. It is Jeopardy time. Bom, 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 bom. The choices are number of people on terrorist watch list stopped at southern U.S. border has fallen or risen. You have five seconds. I'm going to say my gut instinct, risen. Four. See, this is why I have you, because you are a sharp, sharp. You are sharper than marble. That's all sharp you are. <laughs> and, and a marble is sharp enough to figure that out. So far in fiscal, by the way, uh, with all due respect, so far in fiscal year 2023, 160 migrants whose identities match those on the list have been stopped trying to cross the U.S.-Mexico border compared to 100 in 2022. Now, if you missed the first part of that, it says, so far, now this article was sep- was September of 2023. So, so far up to September, 160 on the tariff watch list is not stopped. In the entire year of 2022, 100 have been stopped. It's getting worse and worse and worse. Skip down here. 
as of July, again, this is July of 2023, 160 migrants whose identities match those on the terrorist screen database have been apprehended by customs and border protection trying to cross U.S.-Mexico border during fiscal year 2023 compared to 100 in 2022. The number of all people, including U.S. citizens, on the terrorist watch list who had been stopped at the southern border as of July this fiscal year, and last year, was 216 compared to 165 in all of fiscal year 2022. The number of border crossers on the watch list was higher in fiscal 2019 at 280. Skipping down here, the number of migrants you know, here is what's really, this should be frightening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. The number of migrants from the Eastern Hemisphere more than doubled from 110,000 in fiscal 22 to 228,000 so far in fiscal 23, the Homeland Threat Assessment said. The Eastern Hemisphere includes Africa and the Middle East, among other areas. There's a couple of more passage, passages here from this article I want to read, but I want to stop right there. Why, does, why would anybody think, or watching, listening to this podcast, ask yourself, why do you think that the number of migrants has more than doubled uh, across the southern border the m another m number of migrants from the eastern hemisphere what do we associate the eastern hemisphere with by the way if you are intellectually honest if you are politically correct and you are a snowflake you'll say gee i i, I don't know I, I you know maybe we were attacked 9 11 by eskimos or you know or it, you know uh, who, uh, australians maybe you'll say that but if you're intellectually honest and you know what the truth is, what do we associate with the Eastern Hemisphere? Damn it. We associate Iran and Syria and Hamas and Hezbollah and ISIS. This is where, by the way, if you're Russia, United States, whatever it is, all the France and England and, and, and even China, all the countries who have more than two brain cells will stop together and know what comes out of the Eastern Hemisphere. Sorry. It's a hard fact of life. That's what we're dealing with. Why do you think it's doubled? It's because the border be become, it's continued to be a sieve. It con continues to be wide open. But there's another reason, Anthony, I think that things are ramping up. The thing, the reason things are accelerating, the thing, the reason that the border is worse today than it was a year ago is because people who want to get into this country have a reasonable belief that Joe Biden will not be president come January of 2025. Now, that may not be the fact. He may still be the president. He won't know he is but he'll still be officially the president of the United States. That's all possible. I don't know what's going to happen come November 5th this year. I have no idea what's going to happen. But there are a lot of people out there internally in this country and externally worldwide that are predicting that he won't be. And so for anybody who doesn't have nefarious reasons, they do want to get here for economic reasons. They're trying to bring their family over. They want a bit way of life. Or those people who want to get here and they want to commit a terrorist act that makes 9-11 pale in comparison, they know that it's likely they better hurry their asses up because things may become more difficult with another, with a, a, a different administration. That's my, my take on that. And I'll stop there, take a breath, and give you a chance to, to uh, opine, Anthony. Yeah, I hate to put you on the spot, but we, we did a podcast a couple months ago probably six plus months ago about the border. And you, you talked about the actual math behind the amount of people coming in and what the bare minimum of criminals or people who are crossing nefariously, the, the probability of it based on your law enforcement career and how 
they kind of do the numbers on like with within a, a city or a town of how many people there actually commit crime. Do you remember yeah. that? I remember Could very you, well. Can you, and can you refresh? It, uh-huh. It's easy to remember just... because it's, it's such a kind of a general rule of thumb. And I actually remember that show because my brother w- was on the show that day. I yep. actually remember that show very well. And the, and the general rule of thumb, this just comes with arrest records and conviction records, things like this, that generally across the country, that about 10% of the population commits about 90% of the crime. In other words, almost everybody is, is law-abiding you know, rather than, other than running a stop sign or, or things like that. Besides a hundred percent of the people coming from a, a prison, right? Exactly. Exactly. But when you think about that, about 10% of the people cause about 90% of the, of the crime. In other words, if that 10%, if you could identify them, you know, in a perfect world and you wave the magic wand and you pick them up and you move them someplace else that crime would, would at least initially go down. People tend to start engaging in bad behavior when there's a vacuum. That's just human nature. But what I did, I start kind of crunching the numbers. We're talking about the millions of people who've come across the border. And we'll talk briefly here a minute about the, the, the number of, get, of, of getaways of people who we, they, they got away, see them on camera, seems like they've never been identified that come across. So, and, and that's the, we'll just say it now. It's, it's, it's pushing 2 million people, I think, last year of, of the gotaways and getaways, the gotaways. <laughs> I wanted to get away from California, but the gotaways. And, but let's just, say, let's just say a million people. Let's start with a million people that are here. And those numbers are, are consistent. In other words, 10% of them are criminals commit crime. The same as America. So it's nothing to do with culture or race or anything like this. I'm talking about the same formula. If 10% of a million people here that come here across the border or are engaged in, in criminal activity or have been or likely to commit it again, that's 100,000 additional crime breakers. Now, again, that's just a million people. We're not talking about the 10 million or so that have come across the border. I'm just giving you 1 million. Let's say it's half of the formula that is kind of accepted. 50,000, 50,000 more criminals in the country. And we're going to talk about that as well. In other words, we can talk all day long about, oh, that's such a horrible racist thing, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Grow up. Grow up. Grow up, ladies and gentlemen. If you live someplace you've ever witnessed crime, and you probably have, either personally or through the news or talking to your neighbor or your family, or if you've ever been a victim of crime, I think you could admit that there are people out there that engage in criminal behavior. There are bad people out there. And you've got to be Looney Tunes if you think that the only criminals in the world live in the United States. There are criminals in other countries. And now we're up to, I forget how many hundred and something people or hundred and something countries are, are represented now as far as people have crossed the border illegally over the last three and a half years. There are criminals that are crossing the border. And we actually, we brought the receipts again today, Anthony, didn't we? There are criminals who are crossing the border. So yeah. go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, I have one of the 10% that you talked about. I have an you do. Here. I would love to hear yeah. about that. Actually, you mentioned that earlier. So go and ahead. It's, yeah, it's a, it's from our friends from NBC News. <clears throat> I love that news source, right? Yeah. So I'm going to read it right here. It says San Antonio, an Afghan migrant on the terrorist watch list, spent nearly a year inside the U.S. after he was apprehended and released by Border Patrol agents last year. U.S. officials told NBC News. The man was arrested in February and then released last month again by immigration judge who was not told he was a national security threat. So there's zero communication right there. That's that's my editorial on that. And then his name is Mohammed Carwin, 48 years old, was freed on bond as he awaited an immigration hearing in Texas scheduled for 2025. U.S. officials said there, there were no 
restrictions on his movements inside the U.S. No restrictions. And he's on the terror watch list. I And then get this. Get this. Not over. Late Thursday, Carwin was taken into custody again by Immigration and Customs Enforcement agents. A Homeland Security spokesperson said, A source familiar with the matter said that, based on the information currently available, there is no reason to believe this individual entered the country as part of a terrorist mission. You made me speechless, which a lot of people might be happy about right now. What do you, you know, in other words, what do we do with, I mean, that's facts. No one denies what you read is true. I mean, maybe someone denies it. They could deny it. Well, uh, also state, you know, their their source. They have a database that indicates he's a member of Hezbollah, Islami or HIG, a political and a par, paramilitary organization that the U.S. has as designated as a terrorist organization so he he's part of one or several groups i mean mm -hmm. and they just release them no you restrictions. have to wonder anthony and, and i sorry to, but you have to wonder and i remember this story i didn't remember it in detail the way you presented it there that's why i was shaking my head because i'm i'm, I'm sitting here i'm trying to I, i'm trying to formulate some reasoning for federal officials to release this person back in to society. In other words, when we, when we opened the podcast, we, we, we talked about, we know that there is a political motivation well, behind to, this. To, to, to but, be fair, he, he paid his $12,000 bond. Oh, well, I, I, I'm sure he's well-funded by certain sources. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right. Here we go. So he, <laughs> he paid it by way, a $12,000 bond and you're on a, you are a known terrorist and you're able to bond out. I mean, and I know it's what you're getting at to say, well, it'd be fair to pay a $12,000. I mean, in other words, it should be, it shouldn't this be a no bail situation, no bond issued on a per person like this. And by the way, I don't even know why you, you would I guess there are a lot of a couple of options here, you know, based on his previous history, maybe it's somebody you can detain in a military prison, get Mo. I know that's out of fashion now, but there are military installations where some like this, I think I was never in the military, but I would assume if I'm wrong, someone send a comment and explain how this works or at the very least deport his ass. That's the, you know, that's the first thing that, that you can do. We know we can do. I'm at a loss of understanding why this person under any circumstances bailing himself out or not, why they're allowed to stay. But it does show this. It shows a complete disrespect, AKA contempt for the rule of law. We know all kinds of people. We know all kinds of people that have had massive judgments levied against them, massive bails imposed on them for non-criminal behavior or allegations. And I won't mention any names. You guys ask yourself who I'm talking about. But this person's allowed to bail out. I, I I don't I don't understand. So but I'm glad you brought that up because and there's more, but that's a very, very specific example of someone who didn't come here because they want a better way of life. They're certainly here and we know historically from their life's past that they have nefarious intentions and destructive beliefs. Let me uh, finish up with finish up this article, Anthony, and we're going to move over into some more of the receipts about what we're talking about. This is the last part of that my NBC article right there. Just so you know, and the reason I want to read this is because if they listen, NBC never been conservative, and that's why I'm I'm reading from it, and they they put the information in here, which is pretty good but they could not help themselves near the end. They just couldn't help themselves. Let me read this to you. Americans, basically they're trying to, um, they're trying to make a comparison or make us feel safer about how unlikely anybody's gonna die in a terrorist attack. 
Americans are much more likely to die from illegal drug overdoses than terrorist attacks. Now, again, facts are facts, and that is a fact. You're much more likely, I'm guessing, to die from a, a drug overdose than you are in an airliner crash. Well, speaking of airliner, I remember you and, and Bill Bodner on the Truth Nation podcast, you, were, you guys were talking about the fentanyl deaths, and mm -hmm. we're averaging about 200 fentanyl deaths a day, which is about an airliner going down They're, every right. single day. It's a great memory. I just wanted to throw that in. Yeah. So it is high. But Americans are much more likely to die from illegal drug overdoses than terrorist attacks, the report noted. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention data said more than 100,000 Americans have died from drug overdoses in the last year, with more than 75% of those overdoses coming from fentanyl and other synthetic opioids. Now, here's the kicker. So they put this little caveat in there. Say, yeah, we know there may be some terrorists or some people on the watch list that had to squeeze through this very, very tight screening process that the Biden administration's worked so hard to create. But don't worry. Don't worry because, frankly speaking, it's just not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. The drugs are the problem. By the way, the drugs are a problem. We've talked about this on our show. We talked about it on Bill Bardner's show, Truth Nation. Absolutely. Well, they just but walk right over. You want the drugs. Exactly. But I want to I want to tie this together so you can see when you when you're not when you're not governing or acting, behaving in a way that's based on principle, that's based on virtue, this is how you knot yourself up. This is how you get the wires crossed all the time. Because you have an ideological goal and it's not based on principle. It's not based on constants. It's not based on, on, on immovable guidelines. The guidelines, I guess, is immovable. But it's not based on immovable principles. It's based on, on philosophical and I ideological strategies. So I'll say it again. They make a big deal about, hey, don't worry about the terrorist. <clears throat> this article, I'm editing this. They're saying that drugs is the big problem. It is. But let me take you over to our final publication. And yes, this one is a conservative publication, ladies and gentlemen. If I can read liberal publications, I can read from conservative. And this is called Biden's Bloodbath. It's a great site. <clears throat> it is. It has more footnotes in it than it does actual <clears throat> actual general text. In other words, it is very, very well documented what they place here. Want to move down. And this part of it is drugs are pouring over the border into our communities. Illicit drugs are flowing into the country at an alarming rate with only five to 10% being intercepted as border officials struggle to contain the smuggling 1,336 pounds of deadly fentanyl and 8,769 pounds of methamphetamine were seized at the southern border in April alone. And the, by the way, this is the current article, so just this past April, with much more getting through undetected. Fentanyl is now the leading cause of death for Americans aged 18 to 45, with the number killed by the drug up 94% since 2019. Doubled. It's doubled under the Biden administration's regime. 94%. Why do I read that to you? And again, it is all this here, ladies and gentlemen, get it in front of the camera there. It's very, very well documented. So, on one hand, NBC is saying, oh, yeah, we understand there's these people coming across here and we're talking about, but, but you know what? Don't worry about that. It's not that big of a deal, relatively speaking. The problem is, Drugs, the drugs are coming across the same sieve of a border that these terrorists are. You can't have it both ways. You see, these policies are killing Americans and not just Americans, but the migrants themselves one way or another. 
And that's why his website's called Biden's Bloodbath, because it talks about the specific, tangible, documentable deaths and, and other violent crimes resulting from an open border. It's, it's maddening to me. It's mad, maddening to me when we see the types of crimes that are committed. We see all of these deaths that are, are resulting from the influx of drugs. And it's all, I won't say all, because there are other ways for people to get into the United States illegal other than the su southern border. Drugs have been coming across the southern border for forever and in the, in the United States forever. But it doesn't mean that we simply open the door to encourage more of a bad thing to come across. And I want to touch on some of the bullet points from, from uh, this website, Anthony, unless you have something right now you wouldn't want to uh, chime in with. Uh, no, please, please go on. Okay. So, again, it's so well documented. It's a great website. I encourage you to go there and check it out. Uh, and if you're a hater of the show, thank you for listening. But do your own research. You go to the website and check it out. And then and hit the footnotes. See, all the, the federal agencies that are providing this documentation, this is not some, you know, white right-wing whatever group that's just making this stuff up. It's actually from the federal government where they get their stats. Customs and Border Protection, CBP, data shows 179,725 illegal immigrants were encountered attempting to cross the U.S. border in April. 180,000 in one month or 38 straight months. Monthly encounters have been higher than even the highest month seen under the uh, previous administration. Roughly 6 thousand daily encounters this dwarfs the definition of a crisis set by obama's department of homeland security secretary jay johnson when he said in 2019 that quote more than 1000 unquote encounters a day quote overwhelms the system unquote this was barack obama's dhs secretary and he said and there's more i read i read the whole passage from him i went to the link here where they footnote what they are reporting in this article, this website. And I read the whole uh, exchange he had with uh, this pundit. And he said that when he got the phone call, you know, every day, so to speak, from his subordinates, that if encounters had gone up over a thousand a day, he wouldn't sleep that night. Now, this is the Democrat DHS Secretary Jay Johnson, by the way, who I met a couple of times, who's a very nice guy. I, I did protection for him when I was in the Ohio Patrol. But he said a thousand would call, cause him not to sleep at night. And now we're up to 6,000 encounters a day. Yeah, More than 9.6 million desirable. illegal immigrants. Go ahead, Anthony. I was going to say that thousand sounds desirable now. It doesn't. It? It's all relative, isn't it? That's exactly. Oh, God, we pray for only a thousand a day. More than 9.6. Six million illegal immigrants have crossed the border since Biden took office. Now, by the way, I think that this website's being pretty fair because there are estimates that it's, it's quite a bit higher than that. But let's just say it's 9.6 million in three and a half years. This is 1.8 million gotaways that have escaped past the border into the U.S. So those gotaways are again that they they're detected with cameras or other sources, but they're, the border and border patrol is just overwhelmed and they physically cannot make contact with these people. So, I mean, 1.8 million, ladies and gentlemen. Let's round it off. Make it worse. It's two, 2 million people. Because, by the way, the word to put in front of gotaways, since used all the time, is known gotaways. These are the people they can document that got away. We don't know what we don't know. There are certainly people who did evade either on purpose or just by chance detection devices, things like this. So it, that's why I say 2 million. It's probably way more than 2 million gotaways that entered the country. Gotaways have exploded under the Biden administration compared to the Trump and Obama years. So if you think this is a, a platform that, you know, that everything's perfect under certain administrations and, and, and not others, Absolutely not. My point is, is that Obama did a lot, lot better than Joe Biden has done. 
And that should put things in perspective. Homeland Security investigations estimate that Mexican cartels are now making $13 billion a year smuggling illegal immigrants into the U.S. 26 times what they made in 2018. 26 times the amount of money. You have to understand something, ladies and gentlemen, that, that $13, billion, $13 billion a year, every one of those dollars is attached to a human being. Every one of those dollars represents somebody, some people that are trafficked across the border illegally by some of the most dangerous individuals and dangerous, or dangerous organizations on planet Earth. And they're making 26 times more money now than they were six years ago under the previous administration. These are real human costs. We know the cost. We know what happens to many of these women. I don't need to get in graphic detail. It's reported all the time. The evidence is there. The shallow graves are there. Certain items, like clothing, are piled up as trophies by these cartels and other criminals. These are real numbers, and these are real cost in human lives and human suffering that this administration is culpable for, ladies and gentlemen. It will, unfortunately, will never be zero. But like any place else, we want to keep the crime as low as possible. It's lower where I live now than it, it, than it was where I was in California. It's not zero here. I would love for it to be zero, probably never be zero. But that's the job of government to do its best to protect our citizens. And by the way, the irony is by protecting our citizens, by protecting our national sovereignty, we end up in an ancillary way protecting other people's lives because there's not this desire, there's not this temptation to come across the border and there's no incentive for these cartels to engage in the behavior that they are. I'm going to finish with this, Anthony, and then I'm going to let you close out today's podcast because people are probably tired of hearing, but it's stuff that you have to hear. You have to understand when you hear certain looked at officials, when you hear certain people from a certain party saying, oh, those people are evil because they're racist and they're xenophobic. It is crap. Meanwhile, their policies are specifically and undeniably harming countless numbers of people today and in the future. Let me finish with this. Oops, wrong page. I got it now. Deadly border crisis continues to worsen. Despite Biden's promise of a fair and humane immigration system, that word, ladies and gentlemen, humane, humane, his open border policies aren't compassionate. They are deadly. By the way, I had not read this at all. I just saw the headline of this part, part of this website, and I just highlighted it. So I have not written this, or read this before, but it's kind of staying what I just said a minute ago. His open border policies aren't compassionate. They are deadly. In just the past month, so this is in April of 2024, an illegal immigrant from Guatemala, Guatemala brutally stabbed to death by his girlfriend and her four-year-old daughter at their home in Florida. In Alabama, an illegal immigrant has been detained for causing a fatal crash that killed a local teenager while being intoxicated at four times the legal limit. Oh, it's just DUI. Oh, really? Yeah, tell that family it's just DUI. They lost their child. Their lives are ruined because this person who killed their daughter should not have been here in the first place. Does this make sense to anybody? They should not have been here in the first place. Two girls under the age of 13 were sexually assaulted under the age of 13 by an illegal immigrant who broke into their home threatened to kill them if they screamed or tried to escape. 
for all of you women's rights activists out there, for you people who, who understand the terror of this. Can you imagine two girls under the age of 13 were sexually assaulted? And they were told if they were, they scream or try to escape, they'd probably lose their lives. He, I can't imagine the terror. I cannot imagine terror. A 30 year old illegal immigrant lured a woman into a Denver shelter for migrants and raped her. Police are now investigating whether there are other victims. Kurt Engelhardt, a senior advisor to Senator Catherine Cortez uh, Mosto, Democrat of Nevada, was killed in a car accident involving a legal immigrant who was charged with failing to stop the stop sign of the accident. Now, again, this sounds like an, an accident, not DUI, not an intentional act or anything like that. But again, it's still a person who should not have been here. Uh, and by the way, this car accident could have happened to this person otherwise. But again, the point is, this person doesn't belong to the country anyway. At least 2,297 people have died attempting to cross the southern border under three years of Biden, more than double the number that died under the entire previous administration. 3,000 people have died, ladies and gentlemen. Is 3,000 3, deaths, is that enough to say we should close the border and stop allowing these people to be tempted to cross it? Those are 3,000 lives that was, would have been saved. At least in this regret, the, the, uh, this aspect, they could have died another way. But those are 3,000 people who would not have died crossing the border if they didn't believe it was literally an open door. And by the way, and I, I don't mean to get too political here, and that's possible, but remember all the images of these people, these caravans, hundreds of thousands of people in different groups coming south to north wearing the Biden Shirts, you, you tell me they weren't encouraged across the border because of Joe Biden's policy. You tell me they were, they were not encouraged to pay cartels $10,000 a head. And yes, you can watch these people on video and audio say, yeah, it cost me $10,000 for me to, for the cartel to smuggle me across the border. You think that they, would, they were not encouraged by these policies? You should think twice if you, if you disagree with that. And there are more and more here. I don't think I have to make my point anymore. I'm going to leave it at that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give it to you, Anthony, here to, to close out the, the hour or so. But these are real numbers. These are real consequences. We as a country today are not engaging in humanitarian behavior by allowing people to come from all over the world across our border without our vetting. I think that I've made it clear about how dangerous it can be to engage in, in that trek to, to begin with, to encourage people to, to do this. And we're certainly not making things safer for our own citizens of the United States of America. We have way too much homegrown crime to begin with. We have way too much welfare state to begin with. We have way too many social services that are out of control to begin with. We have way too many people living on the street to begin with. We do not need any more, any more of any of those things that I just, I just specified. We do not. We do need this. As a dynamic country, any country's dynamic. As a dynamic culture and, and, and civilization. And when I say dynamic culture, what I meant was, one that's thriving. I do not believe in bifurcating our culture into 46 different cultures. We have an American culture. When I say dynamic, what I mean one, one that's alive, one that is thriving. To keep that American culture thriving, yes, we need migration. But migration is there to serve us as Americans. It is to serve the United States of America. It is to keep us strong. It is to bring in the best, the brightest, 
the most hardworking, the most responsible, the most productive people in the world. That is who we are supposed to bring in. It is not a free for all. If we bring in a hundred million more people that we cannot serve, that we cannot vet, that we cannot educate, that we cannot blend into the American culture, it degrades the American culture. We cannot have a country. We cannot have a civilization if we don't secure our borders and we don't make our American principles and cultures priority number one. And I'm done. That was, I couldn't have said that more beautifully, Mark. I mean, you checked in the mail. <laughs> I just want to say that there's three sides to every story. And exactly what you said is, a, is that third side that is the, the truth. It's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's about like the legit victims of what's going on here and the I'll, I'll share this story. I, I had a friend that worked at one of the migrant facilities in Pomona here in California. And she, it was all under 18. So it's all young adults, teenagers, children, even as young as four, maybe even younger. I'm not sure. But the things that she saw there, she seen 12 year olds pregnant coming across the border they didn't want to talk about it they had therapists there and stuff to try to talk to them and they wouldn't even want to talk about it i mean it's horrifying the things that she saw there and what's even worse too is that they've caught multiple people that were they were finding homes for these children they sent they ended up catching them a little too late they sent like 16 kids over to a house 16 it's not an accident. These people requested the kids. They don't know what happened to these children. And this is just in Pomona and during just the end of like 2021 and beginning of 2022. How long has this been going on for since mm -hmm. Biden took over? Mm -hmm. I mean, it just, it's unimaginable. The amount of pain and, and all the, the victims that this has caused. And you have just... I can't even, I don't even know the reason why these people, I think they're just so delusional. They don't want to face the reality of it. Like AOC saying, these are asylum seekers. Well, you tell those children that, that are pregnant now at 13, 12, 14 years old, that were raped coming over here. I mean, and they ended up paying for it too. Like you said, 10,000 ahead, 15,000 or whatever. And, and lots of kids were, were robbed on the way over. So the money that they gave these, they call them coyotes, whatever, they ended up stealing the money and the things that they had on them too. Why? For shits and gigs. Why not? The kid. I'm going to steal whatever they have. And so this is this has been going on for way too long. And, and I want to close out with, I've seen that they were attacking a specific congressman named Thomas Macy. And they were attacking him because he was voting no on aid for Israel. And I just want to put this out there. I don't care about Israel. I don't care about Palestine. And I say that in a way that I only care right now about our own country because our country needs our full attention. And people argue, oh, we need to give aid to Israel to protect our, our borders because, you know, it keeps this and this group in check and all that. No. We need to focus on our own border, our own country first, first and foremost, and forget all the outside politics for right now. It's just like, you know, when a plane is, is going down or, you know, they say, grab your, your air mask first, then protect your children. That's what we need to do. Cause I mean, we're like, we're Boeing right now. Our planes are going down. <laughs> our country is going down. It's going down the toilet and we're fighting about who we should support. And I mean, don't even, we can get into all of that in another podcast, even Ukraine too, right? Yeah. It shouldn't even be a topic being brought up right now at this point with the amount of 
crap that's going on in our country. And I just want to say that, that we need to focus as a whole because we need to focus on that third part of the story, that, that truth about what's happening, not about who's right or wrong. You look at the truth and you see exactly what's happening. I know that Biden bloodbath report, it, it goes through the whole thing and people can look at that and it's either you want to face the reality and the truth or you don't. You just want to keep your head in the sand and think that everything is okay and just ignore all the homeless people outside your house, ignore the crime that's happening, ignore the 13 year olds that are being raped and killed and, you know, virtue signal, put a Palestine flag in your bio or your name and showcase essentially that you care when you really don't and i'm not saying that trump is going to be perfect but i think he's our only option right now for our country and there's certain things that i disagree with but mostly i do agree with him and i am going to get political about it because when you don't get into politics and you choose to, to ignore it this is what happens this is when you vote for, you know, oh, I'm going to get my student loan paid off. I know someone who got their student loan paid off. They're getting, they're making $30,000 a month. And they literally got bought off right in front of my eyes. They, they, they tell me to my face, I can't believe I got my student loan paid off. I'm so happy. Guess who they voted for, you know, in the election, right? Mm -hmm. Guess who they're voting for come November? I guarantee it. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? They got that debt cleared and relieved. But you and me paid for it. That's not fair. I don't care which way you put it. You know, I'm right now our country is going down a really, really fast, slippery slope. And we have to have drastic change. I mean, Donald Trump being a polarizing figure, yes, but he will be our best option to get us out of this right now. And I hope people realize that. And I know I know a lot of people are, especially with this lawfare going on against him. It's only helping him. And these people are so ignorant that they don't they don't see it that way. They think, oh yeah, we're gonna get him. And it's 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 not gonna happen like that. And I hope that if he does win these things are put to immediate stop and people actually see what's going on and they get out of this brainwash that they're in this trance that they're in that they think that they're being noble and stuff voting for this side and and see the actual truth about what's going on i think time will reveal these things but right now it's just so murky it's 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 insane you know so i just i just want to leave at that well anthony i appreciate those words and and you said you couldn't sit it more beautifully than I did. He went down a different road and said what you had to say very, very beautifully and very heartfelt. And not just heartfelt, which can be dangerous, but you also, I think, use logic and intelligence and thoughtfulness in what you said in about your positions. I hope I did the same thing. And, and I hope people take you to heart who are listening to this show. And sh by the way, and share this with your friends who who may not agree with me share it get the word out there are people who who need to hear a different point of view and i think that i i think pray that logic wins out here come november not emotion again i i'm too old to predict anything as far as election i'm way too old to have way too much experience in being wrong with predictions so by the way I was very wrong in 2016 with my prediction about who would win. So from that point on, I said, no more. I'll just wait and see. I'll tell you who's going to win the day after the election from now on. So, but uh, we will see. We shall see. But Anthony, thank you. Thank it's you. always a pleasure. I mean, it's always a pleasure to have you on. You're always behind the scenes and put makeup on, so to speak, for me. I really appreciate it. But thank you for being a guest. And we're going to do more and more of these together. So with that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for li listening. Please, please share the podcast. Please follow us. Please subscribe on YouTube. If you know anybody, just give them a call. Hey, hit the subscribe button on YouTube for your Leo Nation. It's a simple ask. It helps us get the word out. If you believe in 
American culture, American values, American exceptionalism, exceptionalism, sorry. And if you believe in the rule of law, that everyone should be treated based on their behavior and nothing else, then get someone to hit the subscribe button, the like button. Let's get the word out. God bless you. God bless America. And we will see you next time on Your Leo Nation.